It should be noted that I had a shock device on my ankles. That's fact. It's none of your none of your de fellow deputies told me that it was a shock device when I asked what was being placed on my ankles at the start of this trial. Not that I'm aware of. If you interrupt when I do that, you will be removed to the okay, other room. Okay, remove me in. All right, remove attorney. Me in. There is literally nothing shocking about Daryl Brooks' most recent hearing, not what he was wearing on his ankles, not that he got thrown out of the courtroom, and not that he asked once again about the subject matter jurisdiction. Hello everybody, and welcome back to the damn sofa. That's the sofa, my sassy sidekick Roscoe, he is in the real bed today, so his little sassy sidekick. Mr. Teddy Bear Roscoe P. Coltrane is in lieu of him. And my name is Paul. Now, what we do over at this channel is we do several things. Well, we, recently we have been watching the Daryl Brooks trial. It's, you know, concluded, obviously. And he just went in to have a hearing about when they were going to have sentencing, which cannot get here fast enough, right? So, again, you know he showed out. You know he turned up, right? I mean, it's just, it's what he does. So, what we do is we just, at this channel, we review some clips and I talk about them. And that's what we're going to do here today. Um, as always, thank you to everybody who makes the Sova Squad possible. I could not do it without you. Thank you for making this channel and our community what it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And now let's get to the bottom of this subject matter jurisdiction. Seated. I gotta get logged in. There are pink sentencing sheets. So we'll be good for later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. And then I think we're hightailing it over there. Okay. And through this one. I kind of prepared to. Yeah. I just want to say, number one, I commend this judge. She did an amazing job. Look at how refreshed she looks. Look at how she's smiling and enjoying herself. You know that she got the best sleep ever this last weekend, right? And if I was her, I would have been like, oh my God, I have to go up in here one more time. One more time with this clown. Oh my gosh, right? It's just, I, my heart goes out to this woman. Now, also, what I think is interesting about this very quiet clip of uh, Daryl sitting there is just he's staring her down. He's either shaking his leg or, you know, whatever he's doing. But it's like he is ready to go, okay? He's been rehearsing. He's, he's ready. He's ready. He's ready to turn up. He's ready to turn up. Sir, please state your name for the record. <laughs> I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I set for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments and state for the record that I do not identify by the name stated. The record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in custody in person. Um, he is appearing in jail attire today. There ain't nothing to see here, folks, that we have not seen plenty of. I mean, my whole thing with this is I'm like, bro, this didn't work for you the first time, obviously, because we're meeting to find out about your sentencing. It ain't gonna work now, okay? But you know, again, I, whoever's gassing him up about this sovereign citizen thing or whatever this information is, they kept on going at it. You know they're trolling him at jail or prison, wherever he's at right now. You know they're trolling him, right? Like, yeah, come on here. We, we did you a new little speech to ask when she said, wants to know if your name's Daryl. You know, da 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 It gassing him up and he just laps it up like a dog at the damn water dish in mid-August. The court is here to address a couple of things. Of course, uh, the scheduling of sentencing. Um, I also want to address a letter that was sent to the parties uh, late last week on the 28th regarding the unsealing of search warrants, um, a filing from Mr. Brooks, and then an issue uh, just as it relates to the record and the use of restraints during the trial, given a statement that was made by Mr. Brooks when the jury was coming out um, after they had reached their verdicts. Okay, so you see what's on the plate for today, right? This is what they're serving up. This is what we're going to be talking about here. I have not received anything. Um, I'm quite sure, or I don't know if you knew, but the, the very second that I left your courtroom Wednesday, Your Honor, I was placed on... 
I watched, I was told that it was per jail administration, um, that it was policy, it, it was nothing I could do about it. They immediately took me right from court, stripped my cell. I talked to mental health, they changed me right over into the smock and I was basically placed on that. They, they just gave me regular clothes maybe maybe 10 minutes before I came to your courtroom, Your Honor. So I haven't, uh, I, I wasn't allowed off. any we'll mail. Give it to you. Huh? I, I had the letter printed off and we'll give it to you now so you can take a moment to review it. It really says everything that I just put on the record just now as well. I accept for value and return for value this document. I would just note there's a typo in your name, but so my apologies for that. Middle initials indicated wrong. But it does reference this case number. You know that I absolutely killed her having to say that there was a typo on his name. I was just waiting for him to be like, that's not my name. You know they couldn't get him in that turtle uniform quick enough. Okay, I mean, period. And you heard him say, I talked to mental health and they put me in a smock right away. You know. And of course, I mean, this is what happens when you represent yourself. And I'm not trying to say, you know, oh, you shouldn't be able to because of this, that, and the other. But I mean, it is what it is. He has turtle outfit written on him like nobody's damn business. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, like when you go into what he's talking about for the you know what watch, they put the, what is referred to as like a, the turtle uniform. It's like this thing, this smock, like he called it. Uh, basically, so you don't have normal co clothes on that you could do harm to yourself with or whatever. Um, so there's that. Now, again, one thing to notice with this, but if you've watched this trial, then you've seen all of this. He doesn't matter what it is. You could say you are sitting in front of me in an orange shirt and he is not going to want to admit that and he's going to want to argue it because that's, it's just what he does. Again, I can't fathom a regular conversation on the streets with this man. God forbid an argument. Um, so my intent would be to unseal everything uh, tomorrow unless you have an objection and it's based in law. I, I have, like you said, this is my, I didn't even know that this was even sent over to the jail until right now until you told me. Understood. Do you have an objection to what I propose to do, sir? I, I don't even understand. What do you mean by sealed and unsealed? I, I don't. It would become a matter of the public record and anyone could review those search warrants if they make a request. Search warrants for uh, what property? There's a number of search warrants that have been sealed as it relates to this case. From what I saw, everything's been pretty much uh, public. Um, I don't see why they need to be unsealed at this point. Everything's pretty much been public already. All right, well, I am going to unseal them effective tomorrow. Uh, the clerk's office is instructed that first thing tomorrow morning, they may unseal all of the search warrants um, in this case. So again, she's referencing unsealing all the search warrants. And again, notice, he can't just go along with it. Now, remember, he has nothing to lose at this point, right? Or he's got these other charges in Milwaukee. He's got all sorts of stuff. This is just one journey on his legal turmoil right so this is again free entertainment for him right at the taxpayers dollars as far as I'm concerned so he's gonna argue every little bit you know this little paper that she printed off because he didn't get it in jail he's gonna look at it well this has all been public now I will sit here and say where he's like and we'll get even more information about this in a minute from other things where he's like it's basically all public anyways and I'm kind of like, well yeah exactly dude so just go along with it right it's like just in the for everybody involved but again as we've seen with him he doesn't care about the victims he doesn't care about anything but himself and dragging things out and making things as bad as possible for everybody else the next issue i want to address is um i want to make a record specifically as it relates to the restraints that the sheriff's department utilized during this case given a comment made by mr brooks when the jury was coming out the very last time um, I don't recall if you said something about a stun belt or uh, shock shackles or something to that effect, but it was inaccurate. 
I have asked the Sheriff's Department to provide photographic documentation of the shackles that were utilized in this case. The parties will recall um, the tables look a little different now because there are no table skirts on them. Um, on all defense tables in the secure courtroom, there is a, a ring, it's really more it looks like a uh, rectangle, uh, that is attached to the leg of the table and an inmate who's in custody but in trial, uh, a soft restraint system is utilized, um, primarily so it's soft and not heard, and then it's attached to the table so that it confines the inmate uh, to a, a small area with that table. Obviously during the trial, Mr. Brooks was able to stand. Um, his hands were free, but I felt it important to have a thorough record of the restraints that were utilized. The photographs that have been provided are on a compact disc. They will be filed as Court Exhibit 3, but they will remain under seal. Um, and that is because of the security concerns related to how the Sheriff's Department um, secures inmates uh, during a trial. Okay, now I know that was kind of a long clip right there, but I just wanted to put that up there because we're getting ready to watch a bunch of other clips about his reaction to all of this. This is what sets him off, and this is where he goes off. Not off, off. I, I have a question to that. Okay. Why, why, is that, why is that remaining sealed, but everything else being open to the public? That's, I've indicated my reasons are on the record. I'm not going to restate them. So well, I think I think that the public, if they're if they're allowed to see uh, search warrant information and things like that, then I think that they should know that it was a shock device on my ankles. That there was, was no hurt. shock device. It on was your ankles, a shock sir. device. I was told it was a shock device, Mr. Brooks. And that's it was why covered I'm up. The record. It was covered up by a black cloth. So. The jury purposely could not see it, and so that the public could not see it. I was told that a chair had to be placed on my side so that no one can see that I was shackled with ankle shocks. I think the public should know that. The jury should have known that. That's what they were. Mr. Brooks, I've made my ruling. Um, your characterization I, I respect of the ruling, those but it as, should be it should be noted. Your it should be noted. Is noted for the record. Your it should be noted that I had a shock device on my ankles. That's the fact. It it's is a, not fact. a fact. Sir. It is a fact. I'm the one that had them on my ankles. I inquired about what they were. Obviously, I'm going to require about what's being put on my body. I was told that they were a shock device, which I know how a shock device looks because I've I've been through this before in Milwaukee. So I know I know what a shock device is. It was clearly a shock device that was purposely not shown to the jury or to the public. Purposely not. And then now you're saying that it's going to be sealed. Well, why should it be sealed? The right, public Mr. doesn't Brooks, deserve. You're, you're, the public deserves to know. You've made a record. The and public it's deserves noted. to know about and uh, things things pertaining to a, a, a search warrant, but not the fact that I was limited by a shock device. That if I moved the wrong way, I could have got shocked with all this voting. It's absolutely false that you. That have is shock not device false, and you know that is not false. Well, I have the photograph. Well, show the, will be part where's of the photographs. Where's the record? Where's the photographs? And they you will just be said they would be sealed. sealed. Why, why do they need from to be public sealed? View, why do the they need to be that sealed already the indicated. Why do they need to be sealed Mr. Brooks, from the I need to move on to scheduling. Can we move on to subject matter jurisdiction that hasn't been proved for the record? All right. Of course he would finish that off with subject matter jurisdiction. When he said that, you know, she was like, I'm done. We are not even going down this road. Now, here's the thing with the shock ankle thing or whatever. Okay. And, and when I watch him, I'm sitting here and I'm like, does he really believe that that's what he had on, right? Now, we're going to listen to more stuff about this and hear one of the officers testify about this. Uh, clearly, the judge is saying that is not what you had. You know, and I sit here and I'm like, well, I could totally see a cop being like, these are shock devices we're putting on you just for him to think that, right? Because he's just absolutely going with this. No, that's what it was. That's what it was. And then he thinks it's a flex to be like, I, I've, I know what these are before. I've been in Milwaukee. I've been down this road before. And it's like, dude. This is not, this is, this is nothing that you sit here and brag about. Like, I know what a shock device is. I've been on this before. That was a shock device. 
But also, as we've seen where he gaslights and lies, I'm like, he could just be making this completely up. Obviously, he is trying to say that he was under duress to do all these things that he did in court, right? The testimony, you know, represent himself, all this stuff, right? He was under duress. If I didn't say what they wanted to say, if I didn't do what they wanted to do, they were going to shock me. And that's 100% what he's trying to do. So again, whether it's true or not, who knows? I would like to say that I believe the judge and the cops over him, um, but I just think that his performance is so um, jaw-dropping because, I mean, if this is anything else, I'd be like, I believe the person, right? They're convinced that that's what they had on it. So, if anything, at minimum, it just makes me wonder if one of the cops told him that to make him think that, but again, because it's Brooks, I'm just like, he's just gaslighting and making this up to try and throw a wrench, yet another wrench in the system. Let's continue watching. That should not be sealed. If, if, if everything else could be open to the public, then the public should know that I had a shock device on my ankles. That was purposely not shown to the jury or to the public. They should know that. All right, thank you, Mr. Brooks. I disagree wholeheartedly with your well, characterization. Well, it's, it's not true. Mr. Brooks, I didn't interrupt you. Please it's not don't true. interrupt me. It's not true. Mr. Brooks? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure there's cameras rolling right now because there are always cameras rolling. There's always audio on. Mr. Brooks, I need there's to public, move on to there's scheduling. There's public in the courtroom. I had a shock device on my ankles, and they purposely did not want to show that to you guys or to the jury. Mr. That's Brooks, why I can only move I'm advising you. Here or here. Mr. Brooks, I'm advising why. you. And I always had the chair right here. Everybody that came in this courtroom seen that I had a chair right here, even though I had no counsel. What is the reason for me to have a chair right here? Right. Mr. Brooks, Why any further, any in further in interruptions table? will result in you being removed to the other courtroom okay. because and you're not letting me move, move on okay. to scheduling. Is it civil contempt or criminal contempt? All right. Well, at least he's learned the new word, civil and criminal, right? At least he's learned to differentiate between that. I mean, I'm kind of proud of him for that one. Oh my gosh, y'all, can you imagine? And this is how, like, over, like, you see the the cop behind him, how the cop's just in here like, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even sweating this yet. Because the, this is just par for the course. Imagine what he's like in custody, down in the bullpen, back at jail. Imagine dealing with him on any level there. He is probably a nightmare. And the little bit that we've seen of him, the people who, the, the deputies and people like that in the jail system, like whatever you call it, and you know, wherever he's at, they probably see something 10 times worse than what we've seen in the public. One more interruption and you will go to the other courtroom. Well, they need, they need to know that. Stop. They need to know that. They need to know the truth. I'm gonna ask the state some questions. If you interrupt when I do that, you will be removed to the okay, other courtroom. Okay, remove me in. All right, remove attorney. Me in. Attorney Basie. It's not going to stop the fact that they need right. to know that he, he's interrupted. Is I'm sorry, everyone. We'll have to clear the courtroom. He'll be removed to the other courtroom. I'll that's, make that's the appropriate fine. findings. Tell the truth, though, Your Honor. It wouldn't be a Brooks hearing if he was not removed. Now it's just a matter of does he choose to go shirtless the rest of the hearing or remain fully clothed? Sir, I have unmuted you if you could speak to scheduling. Uh, <clears throat> First, Your Honor, uh, I would just like to say that um, I know you're well aware that I have um, ongoing matters in Milwaukee pending too. I have to be in court there in two weeks and those cases are scheduled for trial as well. Um, I mean, my gosh, but Milwaukee, get ready. Get ready, Milwaukee. I mean, come on. And again, this is the whole thing. Eventually, this will run out. And he will be left with just himself and whatever drama he conjures up if he makes it that far, right? This kind of a person to me doesn't last that long in the penitentiary, right? <clears throat> someone who mouths off like this, someone with the current charges as well as past charges, the list that he's on, these, these don't bode well mixed in with that mouth of his right i'm just like Ugh. but again i just see him like whose whose lives is he going to go continue to just wreak havoc on in milwaukee now you know these poor courtrooms but again i just think it's entertainment for him he doesn't have anything else to do right he's going to be incarcerated the rest of his life so this is like something to do i mean he probably looks at it like he has a hot date in milwaukee well let's talk about a related issue and that is do you anticipate anyone speaking on your behalf at the time of sentencing i do all right, do. and do you know how many people you anticipate speaking on your behalf? Um, I don't know uh, an exact number, Your Honor. Uh, rough estimate there be 20 or more. 
Um, I have not yet spoken with everybody, obviously, because of the protocol that I've been on. Um, I haven't had the chance to, essentially some people will be traveling to Wisconsin from different areas, different states. I've got 20 or more people. I mean, my God. Y'all, sentencing is going to be a you-know-what show. First and foremost, my heart breaks for the victims' families that are going to be there, possibly, or maybe on Zoom, regardless of just having to endure this nightmare one more time. Secondly, I am very curious to know who the 20 people are, because you want to know, honestly, who I think they're going to be. I think it's probably going to be mostly people that he doesn't really even know that he corresponds with, like, pen pal type things. You know what I'm saying? Like, if even that, right? I'll be very curious to see if his mother gets up there and speaks, that kind of a thing. And there's no DP there, so it's like you know what I mean what are we fighting for here you know what I'm saying I mean it's like he's been found guilty of some of the most heinous crimes right this man is right up there as far as I'm concerned with Jeffrey Dahmer I mean it's just like this guy is a nightmare so I don't know what they could really do for him by getting up there and speaking other than just make it even worse for the victims and the victims families and all that so let's continue no. So I am going to schedule it for the 15th and the 16th. The 15th will start at um, 8.30 a.m. And uh, depending on, I mean, I'll be ready to go no matter what on the 15th. And if, if the state takes into the afternoon and then Mr. Brooks needs the rest of that afternoon or into the next day, I will certainly make those accommodations. Um, I think I'm going to tentatively say we're going to schedule it for 1 p.m. on the 16th. So y'all heard it the 15th and 16th. Okay, that's be on the lookout. Okay, be on the lookout. Bolo, Bolo. Um, I just, and it's going to take all day, y'all, because number one, there's so many victims in this, and those are the only people, in my opinion, that are really, you know, not have a right. Obviously, everyone has a right to get up there and do all that. But again, remember, he doesn't, he's above the law, right? So <laughs> there's that. Um, but I just, I, again, I fear what he's going to do. I just feel like he's going to make a mockery out of the whole thing. You said, when is this supposed to be? Because I'm, I'm definitely going to need a little bit more time than the, the, the 11th. Mr. Brooks, I've made my decision. The sentencing will be on the 15th and the 16th of November. Anyone who wants to appear by Zoom on your behalf, you must file a request in writing no later than noon on the 11th. The same is true for the state. Um, everyone needs to be specifically identified. Okay, so you heard him. Now he needs more time for this. It doesn't matter what you do. He is going to argue it. If you walked up to him with a suitcase full of money and said, here is a million dollars and $100 bills I'm giving to you, he would complain about it and ask that you come back with it in $20 increments. Okay, that's just, it's just the type of person he is, right? Absolutely no self-awareness and honestly no conscience. Um, we'll go from there. From the, for the record, may I respectfully object to your ruling, Your Honor? It's noted for the record. All right, uh, Madam Clerk, swear him in, please. For the record, may I respectfully request a legal reconsideration right, of Mr. your ruling? Mr. Brooks, I have to mute you because I need to keep going and I can't have this disruption. Go ahead. Absolutely love her and that mute button. <laughs> I mean, I need one of those in real life. It's unfortunate that they just kind of start every day off like this with him and throw him in there and just unmute him when they need to, right? It would have gone so much smoother, but I get you can't do that, that type thing. You have to give him a fair chance. And I felt like she did. I felt like she was way more than gracious with him and all of his antics throughout this trial. Okay, nothing further. Mr. Brooks, you're muted. Do you have any questions regarding the restraint system as testified to by yes. Deputy Kimberly. Yes, I, yes, I do. And Your Honor, you can't practice law from the bench. Um, your question, sir? Uh, so, none of your none of your de fellow deputies told me that it was a shock device when I asked what was being placed on my ankles at the start of this trial? Not that I'm aware of. Not that you're aware of? Did you, do you know for sure that I was, that I was told if they were a shock device. I don't believe that's the truth. I believe every time you had those devices put on, I was in there 
and it was either myself or Deputy Stenielson putting them on, and I did not tell you that, nor did I ever hear Deputy Stenielson tell you that they were an electronic device. So you were here every single day for every single moment of the trial? Correct. And you never heard any deputy tell me that they were, as a matter of fact, let me back up. Do you recall me asking what was being placed on my ankles? That I don't. If you did, we would have told you it was a, just an ankle restraint. And you said that it was an ankle restraint. Did it have any metal parts? Yes. And what are those metal parts? Metal part is where a strap went through and the locking device. And what are those uh, particularly, let's say if a defendant in a trial attempts to let's say attack someone what would those what would be the purpose of those ankle restraints the restraints we had on you would limit your movement so if you did try to do anything we would have had enough time to control you and you state that well the uh the prosecutors stated that the same rules were in effect for the defendant as the prosecution but were they not allowed to put up exhibits to go to the uh, to go to the front of the courtroom and put up exhibits they might have a few times Okay, I know that was a long clip, but I just wanted to put this up there because it's just another example of how Brooks tries to prove a point with questioning these cops and people like that, but it just makes him look bad. You know what I mean? Of course, do you think the cop's going to get up there and say, yeah, you know what? Well, my buddy told him it was a shock thing just to kind of scare him. You know what I mean? Like, of course he's not, even if they said that, right? But then again, Brooks keeps going deeper into it and deeper into it. And now, granted, we don't have a jury in front of him at this point, any of that stuff, but he was doing this during the trial if you watched it and they would the terminology they would use because they would speak directly to him we well, put those on you because of blank and it's like bro this it's just it's not a good look quit questioning them about this stuff because it only makes you look more guilty but the record will reflect it was one time in the presence of the jury and after that i called them on it and said that would not happen and then after that, it was only with the permission of the court and then outside the presence of the jury. I don't, I don't believe that, Your Honor, you can practice law from the bench and answer the question that was asked to the- Mr. Brooks, I'm in charge of the record, not you, and the record's going I, to I be accurate. I didn't say, well, it's not accurate. You're practicing law from the bench. All right, Mr. Brooks, do you have any other questions for this? Yes, witness? I do. Yes, right, I do. It has to be about started. the restraint system. Please okay, continue. And you can't practice law from the bench. I mean, it's like he gets these terms and words and then comes and just flexes them all over the courtroom. Like he's, he's, he really thinks he's done something up in there. Right. And I just love the way, I, mean, I don't love the way, but i just, it, it, it shocks me the way he just so quickly fires back. Do you have any more questions? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You know, I mean, he's just like, but again, he has nothing to lose at this point, right? This is his chance to talk to these authoritative figures any way he wants to. And to a degree, they have to somewhat put up with it, right? Because at the end of the day, she has way more to lose than he does. The cop has way more to lose than Brooks does, right? So it's like they're up on the stand. So they have to remain professional and all this kind of stuff. And Brooks is just going to speak to them however he wants to obviously was was i allowed to pro approach the bench and put up exhibits at any time during this trial you were not and so how is it that the prosecution was able to do something that i was not able to do that's not for me to answer it's because of the shock device that was put on my ankles correct uh there was no shock device on your ankles sir i was told that it was and you said that you don't recall hearing that being told to me, correct? No, I, it was not told to you by me. Yeah, by you, but you also said, that's the, that's the point that I'm getting at. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question. You said that it wasn't told to me by you. I never asked you, correct? You never asked me, but I also did not ever hear Deputy Stenielsen tell you that they I, were a shock I device. never asked you. I never asked you, yes or no? No, you did not. So do you know for sure if I ever asked any other deputies? Well, considering I was in there when the restraints were being
placed on you, I did not ever hear anybody while I was inside the bullpen while they were putting restraints on you. So so it'd be fair to say that you don't know for sure if I ever asked what the device was that was being placed on my ankle. No, I can't be for sure. Well, I hope Brooks felt like he proved his point, although he didn't get what he wanted because at the end of the day, the judge has ruled how she's going to rule this. He was not wearing a shock device, right? Now, whether he was under the impression that he was or not doesn't matter because then you would have to also, if you went by his, we're use air quotes, logic. If he thought he was in a shock device and he turned out the way he did and did so much extra the whole trial, this is a brave man. Most people who would be in fear of their safety and dure under duress and all this kind of stuff because, oh my God, I'm in a shock device, would not have acted the way that he did the entire trial. It's like we just have listened to three weeks of streaming conscious subconscious you know thought processes spewing from this man's mouth now there's another defendant who is going to be spending her time behind bars the rest of her life that i'm almost convinced that we need to have brooks and her be pen pals it's like a punishment now if you want to see me break down her time on the stand check out the video that's popping up now